Good morning, y'all. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> I'm out with you. <laughs> I need another five or ten minutes to go back to sleep, but I'm out with you. Good morning. <laughs> God bless y'all, man. I hope y'all been enjoying y'all week and take and taking y'all time <clears throat> and taking y'all time one day at a time, little by little. Uh, keep that in mind. Not everything, not everything gonna get done at one time, <laughs> little by little. You gotta keep that in mind, man. I'm talking to myself too. You're never gonna get step two to take step one. Step one, taking God at His word. Man. Keep on doing that. Uh, whatever today is. Today is Friday, December 30, 521. It's early. We're up before the sun. <laughs> anyway, uh, all glory, honor, praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Gotta give credit, honor, and glory to who was too. Hey, nobody perfect, man, especially me, okay? So don't get perfection set in your mind. The Lord not looking for perfection, but for devotion. I like what Stephen A. say, I like, I like what Stephen A. say on ESPN. He say, uh, the best ability is availability. You hear, listen, the best ability is availability. That's what the Lord is looking for, whoever making their self available for the Lord. God only going to use the people who make their self available. Like the Lord ain't going to make you do anything. He's not going to make you do a single thing. He, we're not robots. You know, he, he don't want to control us and force us. If that was the case, he's not God. I, I love his nature, you know. I, 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 I love that. So I go somewhere else with that, but I'm, I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to simple. But uh, the Lord ain't looking for perfection, man. He's looking for devotion. Nobody's perfect. You see what I'm saying? Nobody. If you, if any one of y'all got kids, y'all know y'all children mess up. You know you don't have perfect children, but you love them anyway, right? You tell them don't do something, they do it anyway. You know what I mean? They, they get on your nerves, you know? They, you understand they're children. We're, we're, we're God's children. Do you understand that? We mess up and make mistakes. God know that. He know our framework. All right. So don't worry about being perfect and being doing things 100% like the way people want you to do things. <laughs> that throw me off. <laughs> people think you're supposed to do things their way. You know, God's way is, I'm telling you, man. Don't worry about messing up. You're going to mess up. The Bible say all sin and fall short of glory, God. Amen. <laughs> so don't worry about perfection. Go to Psalms 32. <clears throat> Brother David, a man of the God's own heart. I love, I love this. He wrote this. Psalms 32, verse 1. Brother David said, Bless is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. Whose sins are covered. Amen. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them. I love that. Listen. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, Brother David killed the man. He took his wife and had a baby by <laughs> A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all ain't wild. Brother David was a wild dude. I love Brother David, man. Listen. Brother David killed the man, took his wife had a baby bag and tried to cover it up. <laughs> you can't cover up sin. Brother David kept silent for a whole year. Listen, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Through my groaning all day long, for day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. That's it right there. He confessed and acknowledged. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, amen, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess. <laughs> I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. I love that. The Lord will forgive you if you confess to him anytime. Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, let all the faithful pray to you. While you may be found, it's still time. As long as as long as it is a day called today. <laughs> Every day you wake up, as long as it's still called today, you have time. Uh, therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Amen. I will instruct you, the Lord says. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my love and eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by a dead and brittle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. I love that. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. I love that. Brother David uh, wrote this. Brother David uh, kept quiet for a whole year. Then acknowledged the sins of the Lord. The Lord forgave him. I love that. I love that. Ain't no need to keep quiet, y'all. Where I'm going to. Oh, yeah. I like what David said. Oh, yeah. That's a big point. I like that. 
I'm gonna go there while while while, while it's right there. David said, uh, "Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Uh, it's good to keep on praying. Pray to the Lord. Don't never stop praying. <clears throat> Don't never stop praying. All right. While we the power in prayer. Okay. I'm gonna read this. Uh, James chapter five. James chapter five. Bear with me." James chapter 5, verses um, 16. James chapter 5, verse 16, Brother James said, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. It, it really is. It's powerful and effective. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Romans, the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 22, Brother Paul said, uh, This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Put your faith in the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord. Ain't nobody righteous, but anytime you turn to the Lord and put your faith in him, this righteousness is given through faith. The Lord accounted to you. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14, uh, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Uh, Luke chapter 18, y'all bear with me. You know I ain't coordinated, man. I probably never will be, especially so early. I like uh, <clears throat> Luke chapter 18, verse 9. The title say, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Uh, Jesus said, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, and the other, a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. <laughs> now, he ain't praying right right here. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> this ain't a good prayer. He ain't praying right. But listen, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. I would have been like, what? <laughs> God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, uh, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I... <laughs> I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. That's how some people think. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's, that's how you, that's simple, from the heart. And he meant it. That's a, that's a good prayer. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> I tell you, Lord Jesus said, that rather, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. I love it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the sinner repented, and God heard his prayer. He humbled himself. Genesis 32, uh, verse 1 through 21. Jacob was afraid of his brother Esau. Last time he seen his brother Issa, his brother was said he's gonna kill him. <laughs> and Issa won't play in him. <laughs> Jacob ran. Jacob won't he, he won't mess with his older brother. <laughs> but listen, though, Jacob prayed. He was afraid of his older brother. Uh, the Lord told him to go back. <clears throat> and Jacob was afraid to go back, so he, he prayed before he went back. I, I, I love Jacob's prayer. Listen, Genesis uh, thirty-two verses one through twenty-one. Uh, <clears throat> down around verse 9 verse 7 Genesis 32 verse 7 say in great fear and distress Jacob was a, he was in great fear and distress he divided the people who were with him into two groups and the flocks and the herds the camels as well he thought if Esau comes and attack one group the other that is the other that is left may escape then Jacob prayed O oh God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I'm unworthy of all the kindness. Yeah. When when, when you get to the place the Lord ever allowed you to get to, you're going to say the same thing right here. When, when, when God been so good to you and he blessed you, I'm telling you, when, when, when the Lord bless you and you look back, and I'm telling you, this, you're going to say this right here. I'm unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown to your servant. Amen. I love that. Jacob said, I'm unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown to your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Save me. I pray from the hand of my brother Esau, for I'm afraid he will come and attack me. And also the mothers, 
the mothers of with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and you will make and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. Amen. He su uh, Jacob prayed before he met his brother. <clears throat> I love the fact that God worked everything out before. But I, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Jacob met his brother. His brother was happy to see him, man. <laughs> his brother was happy to see him. He was afraid. He prayed. I'm telling you, he was afraid. God, I, I love that. God will work on somebody's heart before you get there. I'm telling you, that, 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 that's for somebody right there. Because some of y'all got a problem with somebody. Pray about it. <laughs> God, God. God will work on that person's heart before before they even get to you. pray about it and see what he not do it. <clears throat> uh, Deuteronomy chapter nine, Moses prayed for the community and his brothers. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter nine, one day the, when Moses was up on that mountain, uh, them people made that golden calf. God wasn't happy with them people neither. He was going to destroy them people. But Moses prayed for the people. Though. I love that. I like the way the King James Version read. I'm, read, I'm reading out the NIV, though. I got plenty of time. Let me sip my coffee. Every time I sip my coffee, since I waste my coffee the other day, man, I keep having flashbacks and waste my coffee on everything. I don't know what. <laughs> Bear with me, though. That's going to throw me out. All right. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. The title said, The Golden Calf. The Golden Calf. Brother Moses said to the people, remember this and never forget how you aroused the anger of the Lord, your God, in the wilderness. From the day you left each until you arrived here, you have been rebellious against the Lord. At Horab, you aroused the Lord's wrath so that he was angry enough to destroy you. When I went up on the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord had made with you, I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread and drank no water. The Lord gave me two stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God. On them were the commandments. The Lord proclaimed to you on the mountain out, out of the fire, on the day of the assembly, on the day of the assembly. At the end of the 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord told me, go down from here at once because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have turned away quickly from what I commanded them and have made an idol for themselves. Listen. <clears throat> and the Lord said to me, I have seen this people and they are a stiff necked people. Indeed, let me alone so that I may destroy them and blot out their names from under heaven. And I will make you into a nation stronger and more numerous than they and more numerous than they. The Lord told Moses, <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> Leave me alone. Get out of my way. I'm going to destroy these people and I'm going to make you into a nation. I'd have been looking about like, all right, you going to, all right. I mean, you the one who, I ain't going to argue with you. True. <laughs> Make my little easier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but hey, I, that's me. That's me. I, that's how I'd have been. Word up. Because these people ain't doing nothing cause the most trouble. So I'd have been like, all right, you want to get rid of these people and make me into a great nation? Go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Y'all better be like, I ain't nice as boss. <laughs> but that dude say on that movie, like, I ain't nice as boss. Listen. <laughs> uh, I, 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 love, I love Moses, though, and what he did for the people. The Lord told Moses to get, get out the way so that I may destroy these people and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make you into a great nation, into a nation strong and more numerous than they. But listen to Moses. <clears throat> so I turned and went down... So I turned and went down from the mountain while it was while it was ablaze with fire. And the two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, I saw that you had sinned against the Lord, your God. You had made for yourselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. You had you had turned aside quickly from the way that the Lord had commanded you. So I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands, breaking them to pieces before your eyes. Then once again, I fell prostrate before the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights. <clears throat> Moses prayed again for the people. I ate no bread and drank no water because of, of the sin you had committed. Doing what was evil in the Lord's sight. And so arousing his anger, I feared, the, I feared the anger and wrath of the Lord. For he was angry enough with you to destroy you. But again, the Lord listened to me. I love that. The power, uh, what James said. The Lord was ready to destroy these people, but Moses prayed for them, though. I love that. 
Uh, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Amen. Uh, the Lord is ready to destroy these people. And uh, I feared the anger and the wrath of the Lord, for he was angry enough with you to destroy you. But again, the Lord listened to me. And the Lord was angry enough with Aaron to destroy him. But at that time, I prayed for Aaron too. Amen. <laughs> Aaron, his, Aaron, his brother. I love that. The Lord is ready to destroy these people. Moses prayed for them. Though. I love that so much, man. I love that so much. I'm telling you, but, but Moses prayed for the people and his brother. Amen. Also, I took that sinful thing of yours, the calf you had made, and burnt it in the fire. Then I crushed it to the ground uh, to, to powder as fine as dust and threw, and threw the dust into the stream that flowed down the mountain. All right. Uh, I can keep reading that because it keep going. You also made the Lord angry at Tiber, at Massa, and at Kibberth, had Tiva. And when the Lord sent you out from Kadesh Bar Barni, he said, go up to take possession of the land I have given you. But you rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. You did not trust him or you did not trust him or obey him. You have been rebellious against the Lord ever since I have known you. I lay prostrate before the Lord those 40 days and 40 nights because the Lord has said he would destroy you. I prayed to the Lord and said, Sovereign Lord, do not destroy your people, your own inheritance that you redeemed by your great power and brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Overlook the stubbornness of this people. Hey, hmm, I love that. Overlook the stubbornness of this people, their, wicked, their wickedness and their sin. Otherwise, the country from which you brought us will say, because the Lord was not able to take them into the land he had promised them, and because he hated them, he brought them out to put them to death in the wilderness. But they are your people, your inheritance, that, that you brought out uh, by your great power and your outstretched arm. Amen? I like that. I like that. I still got plenty of time. All right. <clears throat> in Judges chapter 16, uh, verses 23 through 31. Judges chapter 16, verses 23 through uh, through 31. Samson prayed before his death. Samson got caught up messing with that girl Delilah. <laughs> a lot of y'all get caught up messing with some things out here, whether it's a female or a male, whatever, whatever y'all got. But if, the, if I'm talking to the men, y'all know y'all got, y'all got, uh, mean female problems. If I'm talking to the ladies, some of y'all ladies, uh, be more interactive than the dudes be these days. <laughs> uh, but anyway, where was I going to? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, Samson got caught up messing with that girl Delilah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, they end up tricking him and end up uh, uh, putting him between these two poles. That that's gonna kill him. But the Lord avenged uh, Samson though, like on the pole. If I can get there, my fingers ain't working. I don't know where. Judges chapter sixteen. Bear with me, please. It's early in the morning. Judges chapter sixteen, verse twenty-eight. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, the people had Samson in between these two poles. They, they, they was getting the best of him. Samson prayed one more time, though. Judges 16, verse uh, 28. Say, then Samson prayed to the Lord. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God. <clears throat> Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God. Strengthen me just one more time. Just once more. <laughs> and let me, and let me, with one blow, give revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Amen. I love that the Lord gave Samson the power too to bring up to bring down to bring down to bring down that temple he was in with the people in it. I'm telling you, Samson prayed strengthening. He was Samson was messing around with something he had no business messing around with. <laughs> right up. Second Kings chapter nineteen verses fourteen. Second uh, Kings chapter twenty uh, verses one. Bear with me. There's a man named Hezekiah who, who became sick. If I can get there. I don't know why my fingers ain't work. 2 Kings chapter uh, 20, verses 1 through 11 say it. Hezekiah's illness, what the title say. Uh, Hezekiah was sick until the point of death. Hezekiah prayed over his death. He prayed to the Lord. Listen. Keep on praying. Don't ever stop praying. Whatever situation you're in. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. The title says, Hezekiah's illness. Verse 1 says, In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. 
The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, this is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is right and, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. I love that. Hezekiah was at the point of death. Uh, Isaiah went to him and told him that the Lord told him to put your house in order because you're going to die. His house went in order. What, what you mean? His physical house? Nah. Hezekiah wasn't doing things according to the Lord way. Uh, his house was out of order. And the Lord told him he was going to die. I put your house in order. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. Whew, I'm telling you. <laughs> he turned his face to the wall. And, he turned his face to the wall and prayed. Remember, Lord. You know, we all, I told you we all fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> You'd be surprised what kind of shoes you'll have on your feet. <laughs> Don't nobody walk perfect all the time, babe. You know? <laughs> Hezekiah was at the point of death. <laughs> the Lord told him. <laughs> he became ill in those days. You think you won't get sick? <laughs> Uh, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah left the middle court, the word the, <laughs> before Isaiah left before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah the ruler of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. Amen. I will heal you. I love it. I love that. This is what <laughs> I have. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you on the third day from now. You'll go. Up, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you from this city, from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Amen. I love that. I got to. Um, uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter six. Verse 12 through 42, Brother Solomon prayed. I think I read that to y'all. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 6. Y'all bear with me. It's still super early. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 6. Yeah. Um, I can read that. Yeah, I think I've read to you. Read that's a little long. I like it though. But Brother Solomon prayed, Second Chronicles chapter six, verses one through uh, chapter verses twelve through forty-two. Daniel chapter six. I like Daniel. I'm, I'm gonna go to that one. Y'all better. I told you I'm not coordinate. <laughs> Y'all better up me. It's early in the morning. Keep on praying. Uh, word up. Power in prayer. Pray over every situation, man. Every situation. If I can't get my book, my fingers ain't working. I don't know where. I know where it's at, but I don't know where it's at if that make any sense to you. <laughs> this is throwing me up. Y'all bear with me. It's early in the morning. I'm trying to find Daniel. I don't know why I can't find it. I know exactly where it's at. It's in the book. It's in the Bible somewhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, Daniel, chapter 6. This is embarrassing. You know how many times I done flipped through these pages? <laughs> I can't find something. That's like, I can't get right, bro. That dude say I feel like uh, he, he just can't get right, boss. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 28. Daniel prayed before he was in the lions then. All right. Daniel chapter, I, I like this story. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 6, uh, Verse 1 says, It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel distinguished, the, dis, distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the sad traps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel. They was hating on him and his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable. But they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was so trustworthy, and neither corruption nor neg uh, neg uh Oh, negligent. Uh, 
Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, uh, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. <laughs> you know, it's hard. It's hard. It's the, the, the number one thing people try to get somebody throw it off with it is when they try to get you to choose between doing something their way or God's way. <laughs> when it comes to, come to that, it's, it's, a, it's a hands down. Forget y'all. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. I'm going to please the Lord rather try to please y'all. Because <laughs> that's how I always come down. Man try to make you do something to please them somehow, some way, rather, you know what I mean? And doing what the Lord said. <laughs> when it comes to that, roll with the Lord over everything. I don't care where it leads you to. It led Daniel, it led, it led Daniel into the lion's den. Listen. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, per, uh, perfects, uh, prefects, satraps, advisors, and the governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the, issue the, the, the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and, and Persians, which cannot be repelled. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the, that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows, uh, where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God. Amen. You know, I, I love the fact that Daniel was praying. Daniel was praying. He keep on praying. Listen, he was praying before he got into a situation. You know, that, that's how you're supposed to roll with. He's supposed to be praying before you go in a situation. You know? All right. And that, that ain't stopped, Daniel. Still praying three times a day, down on his knees, giving thanks to his God. Uh, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. <laughs> huh? I love that. Uh, these men found Daniel praying and asking God for help. I love that. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 40 days, anyone who prays to any God or human being except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be rebelled. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who was one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel. He, uh, this dude liked Daniel. He went against Daniel. It was it was these government people who tried to get Daniel arrested. Word up. The king liked Daniel. <clears throat> uh, that's why he was, that's why the king was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to the king to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issued can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that, that, so that Daniel's uh, situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any en en entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried, and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in a in a in an anguish uh, anguish voice. Daniel, servant of the of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continued been able to rescue you from the lions? <laughs> I like that. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, <laughs> May the king live forever. <laughs> My God sent his angel <laughs> and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not heard me because I was found innocent in, in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted, <laughs> because he had trusted in his God. 
at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. Mm. <laughs> and before they reached the floor, <laughs> and before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, <laughs> I like this, I like this King Darius too. I issue a decree that in every part, part of my kingdom, pe people must fear and, re and reverence the God of Daniel. <laughs> for he is the living God and endures forever. Speaking about our father, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel. <laughs> he has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel pros uh, prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. <laughs> Man, I had uh, a few more in the... And Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1 through 19, Habakkuk pray. That's a real good one. Matthew chapter 5, verses 5 through 14, Lord Jesus taught us how to pray. I'm, I'm going to go there. I got five minutes. I'm, I'm going to go there. I, I was going to get off here. I'm going to read that one. I like that one. Lord Jesus taught us how to pray if you don't know how. He taught us right here. Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, the title say prayer. Jesus said, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they, they have received their, their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Everything you need is right there. If you understand that, our Father in heaven, you signify and God is your Father. Hallowed be your name. You you hallow, you 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 honor and hallow in God's name. Your kingdom come. His kingdom is the Holy Spirit. You asking God for to give you the Holy Spirit. Your will be done. You asking the Lord. You asking for the Lord to have His way on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, not just physical food, but. Jesus said, man, don't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the man of God. That, that, that is your daily bread. You need a word from God every day and not, not just physical food, but you need your spiritual food each and every single day. And forgive us our debts. The debts is what you owe somebody. Sin. Uh, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins as we as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive us our forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation. God don't let me, God don't lead me into the into the temptation of the world, Satan and sin, but deliver us from the evil one. Because Satan wishes to uh, he, he he he's seeking for someone to devour. You see. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You see? Uh, Ephesians, uh, John chapter 17, verse 1 through 26, one of the greatest prayers. Jesus prayed for everybody. I love that. You go read that on your own time. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, Brother Paul said, pray in the spirit on all occasions. Keep on praying. Don't never stop praying. Keep on praying over everything. Y'all pray for me. I like what Paul said. Pray for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I can proclaim the, the gospel boldly and <laughs> fearlessly as I should. Amen. I love that. I love that. Bless you, Paul. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless all y'all, man. Bless all y'all. Y'all keep on asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. And keep on praying. Don't ever stop praying. It's power in prayer. I'm telling you. Uh, the Lord gonna give you the Holy Spirit. Keep on asking. It's the Holy Spirit leading the Lord Jesus now. The Lord Jesus is gonna lead us to be home with our Father in heaven one day. Get up out this place, you hear me? Because we do gotta go somewhere one day, whether you know that or not. 
you know, this is temporary. You know, people think uh, Jesus could pop up anytime you want to pop up. <laughs> he ain't got to pop up in the way, he, like, you know, it, he could come take you. Like, you got to go one day, but I'm just saying. People like, Jesus ain't come back no time soon. <laughs> That's what people be think. Man, dog, you, you're not long. You're going to live. The Lord can come for you. Your life can be over. Come for you tomorrow if you wanted to. Word. Keep your... Uh, I'm about to go somewhere else. But uh, I forgot what I was thinking about. <laughs> be honest with you. <laughs> be honest with you. Keep on asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit, though. Don't ever stop asking. And keep on praying. Don't ever stop praying. Keep on praying. Don't ever stop that. Y'all pray for me. I keep on praying for y'all, too. i see y'all again. God bless y'all.